In this video, I'm going to be walking you through step by step this trade breakdown. I'm leaving nothing out. I'll be giving you everything from market structure to supply and demand and everything in between. This may be the most valuable video I've ever created on this channel. I will say stay to the end of this video because there is a free market structure course, nine episodes, step by step, teaching you exactly how to identify market structure in the right way. So stick to the end and you will receive that. So I want to start with the theory, as always, kind of just giving you guys the actual undertakings of how market structure operates and how we at Prosperity Academy operate market structure. We have a very specific way in which we do so. So I want to start with, of course, our swing, right? So we have three different types of market structure. So in this, we'll go over those three types and type one is ultimately swing right so we'll operate swing in red so our swing structure and this is an oversimplified example is essentially you can or you can almost see the swing points of market structure right it's essentially these external points in where you see market shift and reverse from right and then ultimately that swing structure will take on a trend right and in this scenario you can see we have a bearish trend essentially price puts in a low lower high lower low the moment we get that lower low the moment we get this shift down in here that is our confirmation that we have a trend right essentially price put in lower lows comes back up lower high lower low lower high lower low right and then essentially you're just playing out this trend and the, again the trend is your friend it's always want to be trading in alignment with the trend never trading counter trend and then at some point in time you will likely have this market structure shift right this shift right here is what we identify as a change of character right or chalk as many prefer it now change of character is no different really to a break of structure it's a common question the difference between break of structure and change of character and i understand that question but in reality there is not much of a difference the the, the differentiation is that the change of character is the first phase break of structure, right? So we have a three phase reversal model to understand whether the market structure is reversed, whether the trend has shifted. And that is number one, change of character, right? So we were going from lower lows and now we've just put in a higher high. So that's change of character. Price pulls back, mitigation, continuation, right? So we have a change of character which is essentially the shift from lower lows to, in this scenario, higher high, right? That's phase one. Essentially, that phase right there is phase one. So we don't know whether the market has shifted. We don't know whether this is a true change of character or whether it could just be a run on liquidity for a continuation, right? So how we confirm that is phase two, which is a, right? So price ultimately ends up respecting an area of demand in this region and then continues moving and takes out the next high. And then of course, that next high is just a break of structure. And that break of structure is our third phase. Once you get that break of structure, now you've confirmed the trend has shifted. So giving yourself not just one sign, but waiting for the additional confirmation, that will then tell you that it's now on to continue that trend. However, what I will say is we do still trade the change of character. Now, is it always right? No, of course it's not but you don't have to always be right. You just have to be right essentially enough times to profit depending on the risk reward ratio. So you'll get a change of character and then, you know, if price continues, you'll have something along the lines of this. And so our swing points are just essentially lower high, lower low, higher high, higher low, higher high. Expecting from here, respect of this low and then continuation, higher high again, right? So that's one type of structure. That's just our swing structure. Now our swing structure is our main type of structure. This is what identifies all opportunities. But when you get into more of the advanced market structure, as you will find in our free course, you will see that essentially price doesn't deliver itself so simply, right? So price will usually look something along the lines of this, right? This is the typical way that a market will actually deliver its price. So it's not so black and white. However, if you actually just objectively look at that, you can already see the, the swing points once again are just these external swings of reversal. So this is where price puts in a low. What happens? Price bottoms out and reverses back to the upside, right? So now we have our low. Price bottoms out, it begins its reversal, right? The highest point it pulls back from before again, it begins its reversal. Again, reverses from this point, reverses, reverses, and reverses. So they are the external swing points that reverse structure, right? So maybe that isn't enough for you. Maybe that's too subjective. So let's add in there something else because this is where our other types of structure come involved. But if we have our swing structure, which I'll map out here in red, 
So those are our swing points of market structure. And again, all of this is super important to understand how we are actually able to identify these case studies in here. So, you know, so that's our swing structure, right? Now, inside of that structure, what are these? These right here are what people oftentimes get confused on. They don't know what differentiates this as a reversal point or this as a reversal point. And the simple way to understand that is always have a trading range. Right, always have the current high and the current low that you're actually operating from. And then what you can do, again, if you're kind of new to this and getting this under control, you can draw a box out from the low to the high and draw it across right there. And essentially, you can just assume that anything inside of that box is not swing structure. It's internal structure, right? So the two core concepts are external and internal, right? Swing and the current internal trend order flow so our order flow is inside of the box but again there's two types of order flow right there's counter order flow and that can be identified as price currently trending right internal counter currently trending in the opposite direction of swing that's simple price is currently trending in the opposite direction to the swing structure so price comes up high low higher low higher high higher low higher high in that moment right there Lots of people are looking at price and they are seeing bullish price action. They are in, in a bias with this idea that price is currently bullish, but they haven't quite grasped the concept of swing structure. And essentially all of this is right here is just a pullback, a one of the type of pullbacks that we have. And in this scenario, it's a complex pullback. So price is in this pullback phase. And at some point in time, what you get is this which is an internal change of character. So an eye chalk, right? It is still a change of character, but it's just an internal change of character. It's the shift from higher highs to lower lows internally. And that is what we identify as our internal pro, right? IP, our internal pro trend. The internal pro trend is when the internal aligns itself with the counter trend. Now in this specific scenario right here, when we get that internal shift, there will be an area of supply as always that caused that shift. And our first model, the first trade that we're gonna walk through is using this exact model. And so we get involved in this first shift right here and we get out at these lows down here because logically speaking, we're already trending bearish. And so all we need to see is the confirmation of the present moment order flow. Think in terms of fractals, right? You have your longer time horizons and your shorter time horizons. If your long term and short term both align, you have a very clear understanding of where that market is heading to next. And that is exactly all we're doing. And so essentially that's the that's the first model is where that internal shift aligns with the external. And then what happens? So we have a break of structure externally in which price puts in a new lower low. Now what happens is you begin this pullback phase. And so at, at the time that you know that you're starting to pull back, well now you know you have your swing point because it, it's essentially had its reversal. So from there, you can obviously draw out your new swing high. So how do you actually identify your swing high? Well, your swing high is identified as this, the furthest point that price pulls back in the price leg before breaking structure. Now that's a mouthful. So let me really simply explain it. If we look at this, we have a swing high and a swing low. Price pulls back and then breaks structure. It's the highest point inside of this box, right? And remember, that's the external point where price reverses. So we're just looking for the reversal point. So where is the point of price which caused this IC before the lower low? And in that scenario, of course, it's this right here. That is our swing high. And so now we can map out our swing high because we already know what it is. And now that price put in a low and started its pullback, we can map out our swing low. And so now we know what that is. And so it's as simple as right now, we're just trading inside of that. We're just trading inside of that price leg, right? That is our current range. And so we can just do the exact same thing again, right? Pull up, pull. So this is our internal counter, high, high, low, high, 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 low, high, high. And so what's happening is we're just having a pullback phase, right? Until eventually our internal shifts given us an internal change of character in which this is our internal lower low, right? which can be characterized as internal pro because it realigns itself. Again, area of supply, shorts, like this, right? And it's the same thing over and over again. And so there are three different types of structure and the same thing happens again. Price eventually breaks the lows. We have our swing high. 
we have our swing low, price pulls back, right? And in this simple scenario, we have, so picking back up, essentially we run through the model of the three types. This is obviously scenario number one in which we run through the 15 minute model, right? This is all one time frame. but essentially price doesn't always perfectly play out to this model. There will obviously be times in which let's say you have your, you know, swing high up in here, uh, M15 swing high up in here. You have your M15 swing low up in here, right? It's proven that it's given the pullback. This is your M15 swing low. You know, there will be times where you may have this pullback internal, but then you'll just have one move to the downside. Price won't necessarily pull back always perfectly in this structured manner, right? Price sometimes moves aggressively. Now, there is a different model that we use for that, or just a different model in general. So this is understanding the three different types of structure and understanding that each type of structure comes on any one given time frame there's also multi-dimensional structure and that is essentially diving into model number two so if we look at that model right there let's just first map out our m15 structure like this and we'll run it in the same exact scenario as we did before right let's take this exact model right here this is what we're essentially going to be referring to as model two right this is the m15 and the m1 in combination right this is one of the primary um models that we use so again if i just bring this down a little bit so this is model two so let you know you have your swing m15 high up in here swing high swing low price has its pullback phase swing high up in here right it comes into an area of supply and then essentially goes and puts in a lower low and this right here can be characterized on the 15 minute time frame as you know our internal counter price is now pulling back on the m15 internally price is having this pullback phase this is characterized as your ic right your internal counter uh, ip sorry internal pro so this right here this low when it makes a new lower low we have an internal change of character, lower low, pull back. This is where we want to get involved in the M15, right? So again, that's looking very similar to model one. Model two is pretty similar, but it's just understanding things from a multi-dimensional perspective instead of a singular dimensional. Essentially, you can just understand dimensions as time frames, right? Each each time frame is, offers a different dimension of perceiving price. So this is just everything on the M15 time frame. However, this, this thing still looks exactly the true if it was a drop down to the M1. So this is what multi-time frame analysis looks like. And this is how we really understand model number two, right? Here is our M15 time frame, right? These are, represent our switch swing lows so essentially we can go swing is up here lower low lower high and lower low now what is the lower time frame and by lower time frame i'm talking about the m1 what does the m1 look like inside of this well the m1 and i want to put this in red the m1 right the one minute time frame as the 15 minute makes this the m1 looks like this the m1 is also offering lower lows lower highs lower lows higher highs higher low higher high higher low higher high higher low higher high Lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, and lower low. Right, so this red represents the M1 and this black represents the M15. Well, if we just look at what we had before, right, the M15 puts a leg to the downside. It leaves behind an area of supply. And then essentially, you know, we already understand that the M15 is bearish. So we just make that so. We already know the M15 is bearish, right? We had a break of structure to the downside. So we know that this is our swing high. We know that this down here is our swing low on the M15. And this is essentially model number two. So as the higher time frame puts in its lower leg, of course, the M1, the order flow at that present moment is obviously bearish, right? So it's being respected. Then what happens is you have a pullback on the M15. Now, typically speaking, when you have a break of structure, whether it's straight away or whether it comes after a certain amount of time, whatever it is, at some point, you will definitely have a pullback, right? And that pullback is characterized on the one minute time frame as a change of character. And then ugh, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, and higher highs. Until eventually, you will come into some sort of point of interest, some area of interest in which we know there to be orders in that level that we think that could give the reaction that are gonna take price lower because we know we're bearish, right? The M15 is bearish, so our expectational order flow, our expected target is still this low down here, this M15 swing low down here. That's our target, right? And at the moment, we are all the way up here. We're coming from an area in which we think could potentially have the reaction to push price lower 
and take out the swing low. And so in these areas, what we do is we drop down to the one minute time frame. We look at how the one minute time frame has developed structurally and we wait for pretty similar to the previous model where we had the internal change of character, but on the one time frame we wait for that same model right that same change of character but on the one minute time frame and so once you get into your point of interest you go and watch the m1 you wait for this model right here right this change of character and then from there on this same time frame you can look at the area of supply and then you can look at taking this trade in here shorts Sometimes you can protect the high if it makes sense. Sometimes just the area of supply will do. And then you're looking at targeting the lows in here. And that is the model too. So it's very similar to this model, right? But this is just on one time frame. Because what happens is usually if you look on the 15 minute time frame and you see the 15 minute developing this internal structure, well, that internal on the M15 is actually usually our external on the one minute time frame. So you begin to understand that they're not different they're just different in perception of perceiving the same thing right and the only thing that's usually different is the outcome because the risk to reward is usually higher on the m1 however so is the perceived risk in terms of the win rate so now what i want to do is go and share with you step by step how we can apply these methods that we've just learned to the markets using live examples that we ourselves have taken. So first, I'll run you through the first trade. This is the trade that Ben took in um, New York Open on Wednesday. Then I'll run you through the long position that I took in London on Thursday. So Wednesday, 1st of November is the first one using the first model. So you just watched all of that. What's the first thing that we need to do? We have to understand and identify the order flow in which we're trading. So we're going to start, we're on the M15. Essentially, we can just look at what is our current structure? Well, if we just even if we just ignore all of this for right now, what we do know is that this was a high, put in a low, and we had a higher high. So we already know that we can just pick up structure from there because it's very clearly bullish. So we understand that that was our break of structure. So we understand that this right here is our M15 swing high. And we understand that this down here is our M15 swing low. At that time, of course, we were expecting what price to likely go bullish. So let's say we hadn't had this push through the low. Price was bullish. So we were expecting price will come down, push up, come down and continue. It didn't, right? It actually give us a change of character. This change of character to the downside was indicative of lower prices for the M15. So now, we, after we have this break of structure, now we have our lower low, and that is characterized as what? Our M15 swing low. So now we have our swing high and our swing low. So now we know the range in which we are trading inside of. So we just map out this low to this high. Anything inside of that, is our range it's our internal we can begin to map out our internal structure so if we just come up and essentially we see that price had this high up in here that is essentially our first phase internal counter price made this complex pullback before eventually putting in its lower low and then higher high oh, no higher low and then higher high so you can see price putting in a series of higher highs. What's that indicative of? Pullback, right? The M15 internally bullish is just showing us that price is coming for a pullback. And so essentially on top of that, along with structure, we also understand that this area right here is what? Liquidity. Not only do we have, you know, relatively equal highs in here, but this is also a session high. This in here is the Asian session range. These highs are the highs of the Asia session. So not only are they relatively equal highs in here, they're also session highs. Now, what do we know about session highs? Session highs are also a beacon of liquidity. So we have a bunch of buy side liquidity in here. And we know that typically speaking, when price ranges as it's doing in here right now, usually we'll build liquidity on both sides. So we're building liquidity on the sell side as well as the buy side. What will happen is an inducement of one side will take place before the real move occurs. And the reason is, is because in this move right here, smart money is able to induce the opposite side of the market to create the liquidity that they need to move price in their direction. So that's the play at hand right here. So we know 
that we're bearish, right? The order flow is bearish. We know that the internal is currently bullish. We have this liquidity in here that we've just taken out, by the way. And now essentially nothing matters until we eventually break this low. So this is our structural low. If we look at this, right, from a logical perspective of supply and demand, what do we see? We have an area of demand in here and that area of demand pushed the highs. We reacted to that demand. We pushed through, failed to take out the highs. This area of demand got run through. It became weak. So we move into our second area of demand. What happens again? Price comes into the demand, gives us the bullish reaction, fails to do anything significant, takes out the lows, clearly showing us that at the present moment of order flow, there are more vested interest in going short than there are going long. So then we come into a final point of demand. This is the final area in which longs or potential buyers could get involved in the market and drive prices higher into you know, potential areas of supply or imbalance. And so we're just reading the footprint. That's it. And so what occurs is the following. Price essentially gives us the reaction, has a, um, a bullish move to the upside, and in doing so does what, right? Look very carefully. We had supply, mitigation, push up, we have a run through the supply, a run through the demand. The, the supply that caused that run through gets mitigated. Second thing occurs, price comes in, mitigates the demand, pushes out, pushes through, leaves an area of supply. And then what happens? This final demand reaction comes into it to mitigate it. What happens next? Price gives a bearish reaction. And then we get a break and a close through the low. What does that give us? An internal change of character, right? We have gone from putting in a series of higher highs, higher lows and higher highs to now put in a lower low. And where's the only area of supply that is still left to be mitigated? Well, it's this level in here, right? This is the only and final area of supply left to be mitigated. You can refine it up into this wick in here and place this short, covering just the high of the wick, targeting where? Where is our expected target? Well, our expected target are the lows in this region, right? This M15 swing low in this region. So you can do one of two things. You can either just cover the, the high of the wick or you can obviously cover the high of structural point. Now, whatever makes the most logical sense to you, it usually depends on the size of the risk to reward. So in this specific scenario, we're gonna have to do one of two things. We're gonna have to make this smaller to fit a one to five because one to five is the minimum uh, that we will take or we have to stretch this out further to create a one to five. So before we can decide to stretch this out further, which is what we did, we have to understand what are the reasons that price would want to go lower. So number one, what you guys will know is that typically speaking, after we do run a swing low, very rarely will we just run the swing low in reverse. Again, you can look right here for the evidence. We run the swing high and price still continues going. We run the swing low, price still continues going. So usually before the reversal, there will still be a bit of a push before reversing. Okay, so can we shift to the left and take a look at if there's anything that we could potentially target? Well, when coming down, what do we see? There was a huge area of imbalance in this area of price, right? All the way up to here. So there's a huge area of imbalance up there. We have all of these lows to be taken, which is another huge form of liquidity. So we have a bunch of liquidity and a large fair value gap target. So if we think that price is likely gonna probably fill at least 50% of this fair value gap, right, usually. So even if we just draw this, we can look to see a one to 4.45. So one to 4.53, when we get into the 50% and then just stretching it out to make it a one to five, right? So that makes it a one to five, which is the minimum risk reward that we'll take. So this was the idea behind um, the position taken on New York Open on the 1st of November, and this is the outcome. So essentially price played out, price continued moving lower. Now the thing is, is if we take these lows, if we take these lows before we get tagged into this position, the trade has to be pulled up because it no longer makes sense, right? The whole idea is based on running these lows. So what happens, price runs in, tags to pretty much perfection, then it comes all the way deeper into this area of supply. It sits around there uh, for a minute on a lower time frame before giving this real nice reaction. We can go and look at it on the, the five minute time frame just a home run. So we run the lows, right, which is our initial target. Now, one to 3.3. At this low being broken, we go to break even. So regardless of the outcome, it's a break even trade at this point. So the risk is off, which is the most important thing in my opinion. And we just need to run this one to five level. There's reasons to run it. 
in the all of the fair value gap that sit inside of here. And so that is the target. And lo and behold, the price runs directly to one to five, trade comes off full volume, we've fulfilled our objective. Our whole thesis behind this was understanding that we know that the, the footprint right now is bearish and we essentially have this internal bullish pullback, which means obviously we're pulling back. We have a, a huge area of liquidity that we've just run and then we've watched price align back to bearish. So we've watched the internal M15 align with the external M15 with a internal change of character. It's simply just reading the order flow footprint. Price has very clearly just showed us that we are gonna about to run these lows and we may be able to come a little bit deeper to fill this imbalance in here. And that is the whole idea in which the trade was based off of. Now, if we move into the trade that I took, the following morning in London session, I'll show you. So price ends up coming a little bit deeper. Price ends up running a little bit deeper, but again, not not the point. Like it doesn't matter. I'm not trying to maximize the risk reward in every single trade. One to five, it's good enough. Um, price ends up ultimately just coming fill in whatever it wants to fill in here before giving the reaction. So what we must have first understand is our structure now at this point, because we had an M15 swing low, price pulled back, where's the furthest point price pulled back before it shifted the lows? The furthest point is up in here, right? Our swing. So that's our new M15 swing high, because that's the, that's the highest point in pullback before taking out the swing low. So we look at this and then of course this is what our new m15 swing low so logically speaking m15 swing low logically speaking according to the structure we're expecting that price is putting a lower low it's going to pull back and go lower low again now price runs the highs in here but it doesn't break and close that's not a change of character that's just a liquidation that can happen that's not a problem and so from there continue playing price price comes all the way back down to the lows now i was expecting that price would likely run this it ends up giving us a very strong reaction to this area of demand in here comes all the way back up so this is just a range we're sitting inside of now and then it actually ends up changing character right so this change of character right here is essentially the shift from bearish M15 to bullish M15. So this now is still our swing low, right? This is still our M15 swing low. And we're essentially, yeah, shifted to the upside. So we are now on the M15 bullish. And we need to look at what caused this to shift. Number one, there's an area of demand right here, but that has now been mitigated in here. So the next best thing for us to do is to look at this. Price comes up, reacts to this area of supply, gives a pullback and then shifts. And so this range right here, this entire range, this supply range is our point of interest. So obviously price hasn't yet come into London. So we'll keep skipping until we get to London. Okay, so 5.15, 7.45 heading into the markets now. And of course, like what is it that we see? Well, phase one is understanding our institutional order flow is from this low to this high, right? So it's pretty simple. We are bullish and we are looking for a bullish continuation trade. Okay, step number one. Step number two is identifying the area of interest in which we're likely to get a reaction. So we identified that the uh, there's no areas of demand in here really. Everything is fairly mitigated. The only demand area we had was this um, sell to buy wick, which was mitigated just before changing character. So we know that momentum came into the market in here. This is the range in which price pushed down to continue moving price higher. Therefore, we know that this is where the orders remain. Now, whether or not there are enough orders in here that are gonna be able to push the price to the upside, we have no idea because every single trade has a completely random outcome. It's only when we take a number of trades that we can see that our win rate and things of that nature begin to show. So we know that we're bullish, we know we're looking for longs and we know we're looking for longs out of this area. So that's quite it. We can see that our approach to coming back is a rounded approach, which means we have a nice field of liquidity to target up in here. We have relatively equal highs across up in here. So there are a bunch of confluences stacked in the direction of our trade. Then it's just a case of, of course, our entry model. So when price taps in here, we need to go down to our one minute time frame. And again, it's the exact same thing. We understand that externally, if we just pull out and we look at this low to this high, that's our M15, right? But inside of that, we have a bunch of M1 shifts bullish. And then when the M15 is coming for a pullback, like it is right now, the M1 will most times shift bearish. And so we need to identify our M1 structure. And so we do that by understanding where we've come from. So for the for the one minute time frame, again, even if we could just start here, this high pulls back, higher high, higher low. Um, this doesn't have the candle criteria that we have for a pullback. All of that you'll learn uh, shortly. Um, this does have the candle criteria for a pullback. Pullback, higher high. Um, 
high 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 low high high so that was our m1 and what we need to know is is that price set in a range for a decent amount of time uh, so we know we have liquidity on the on the buy side um essentially price range liquidity and then the move out was to the downside so we have a nice distribution here price puts in a lower low so now price is bearish we have lower low lower high lower low higher high so we shift back to bullish but again none of this is of any interest to us where the price shifts bullish and bearish inside of these ranges which it will do multiple times change of character up change of character down we're not interested we're only interested in looking at the order flow when we get into points of interest in the higher time frame so that's simple so yes we have a change of character back to the upside then once again another change of character back to the downside then we pull back then we go um lower low lower high lower low higher high once again more than likely just a liquidation lower low lower high lower low higher high again same thing internal liquidation mitigation of supply lower low lower high and lower low so all we care about is where is the most recent structural range on the m1 when we tap into this m15 so it's this high is the m1 high and this right here is the m1 low so all we care about is whether or not price is going to continue moving to the downside and print us a new structural range or whether it's going to continue and take out the highs now all we're looking for is an order flow shift the order flow shift confirms to us that buyers have stepped in the orders have been processed and now essentially we're heading back to the upside and we can get involved in that move but we need to see that confirmation so what we're looking at is just playing price out you can see price comes back to the lows doesn't break it um, does come back to the lows and then takes off then pulls back and then has this shift upon the break of the high is our change of character so our change of character to the upside so this is what it looks like now from an m1 perspective we have higher high so we have lower lows into higher highs so the m1 order flow has now shifted bullish which means and how we take it is that it's potentially time for the m15 to go and take it higher high because again if we just look at things theoretically it's this right it's the internal lower time frame let's say the lower time frame is put in a series of lower lows lower lower lows higher high right upon this shift right here shifting from lower low to higher high right here that is our indication that the higher time frame is coming for a pullback and so it does and then once we get this shift again that's our indication that price is going for a lower low as it does so it's that thing that is our confirmation in this specific scenario we get the confirmation the price is moving higher and because if we align the m15 right all we've had is essentially you know a higher high higher low and now we're potentially looking at playing the higher high and the confirmation the logic behind it is an order flow shift at the present moment from an area of interest that is likely to have the support in orders that broke the previous high right so it's all mechanical although every trade will look different the thesis and approach is always the same so what do we have right we have essentially price pushes up price pushes down so we have the supply range right the entire supply range in here uh, you may want to refine it to the this kind of final area in which what do we get we get a push through a reaction a push out and a continuation now usually in said scenario what i would do is split the risk across point of interest number one and point of interest number two but in this specific scenario we have perfect equal lows in here which are just completely indicative of a run of liquidity so looking at it for what it is this becomes disregarded and all i care about is this point of interest in here now yes this does also have an area of liquidity but because there's already an area of liquidity i do not mind taking the risk placing the order on here worst case scenario is the price comes down gives me a reaction and pushes through and maybe at a later date i get a new model right and we go again right that's worst case scenario second worst case scenario price comes in reacts to my order gives us the reaction pushes price through i get to go break even and then it comes down and worst case scenario we get a break even right that is essentially it so that is the idea that is the thesis behind the position so what we can do is this is the uh, trade just going for the area that has the fair value gap placing it at the open of the fair value gap i want to cover these lows in here six and a half pip stop and where do i want to target i'm just targeting predominantly the highs up in here right one to five that's my main target that is where i'm going to be able to secure 80 percent of my position now there are certain scenarios in which i will let the trade run high that's what i will walk you through now so if we actually go to the four hour time frame which is our um which is our most important time frame 
when understanding the higher time frame, the longer time frame of the order flow. If we just come in right here, it's very simple. All you need to see is the following. Price was bearish, right? We essentially had a low, a lower high, and a lower low. And then we had the shift to the upside bullish so at this point the m the h4 the h4 swing high had been broken giving us a h4 change of character at that point we have our h4 swing low and we have our h4 swing high this is something that for the past couple of weeks uh, we've been eyeing up myself and our members have been eyeing up this um potential move to come in we first originally thought it was gonna occur here when price ran the internal and give us the shift it didn't it came back liquidated came deeper into this overall point of interest here into the unrefined part of the imbalance and we begin to have the reaction so again exactly the same thing what do we have lower low higher high we're just playing the higher low and the higher high so a second target for this position is what our h4 highs because we're able to play into that h4 perspective it's all the same thing just in fractals nothing actually changes so we want to secure 80% at these highs up in here at the previous swing high. So we can label this 80% and then we want to let the rest of the position run to this high where we can keep on just 20% of the position. Gives you a 26, 27 risk to reward trade. Remember it's only 20R is being taken off of that position. So that gives you around about an additional 5%. And that's everything about, uh, that's the importance of um, understanding your risk, understanding your risk management. So if we could drop back in to the one minute time frame and we play this out, see how that plays out we'll watch the following and we'll understand when do we go break even and everything of that nature so just playing price essentially price had a run what happens price runs straight on the liquidity in these lows not even a reaction just a run straight through the liquidity in which price began to range for a while before eventually running those lows coming in tagging deep into the point of interest and we had a pretty nice first reaction and i'm just looking at getting these highs taken out and I can go to break even. Once I break even, the outcome of the trade is less important. And again, immediately stops at break even. Now I know that I've identified the opportunity. I've executed on that opportunity and I'm break even. For me now, psychologically, the outcome of this trade has a far less significance, right? Because I have no risk to it. So there is, you know, no real worst case scenario other than a break even which i'm totally fine with and you can see price just essentially uh, continues to play out we're just looking at this this is a potential area for a reaction and then price breaks the highs and so we have a new you know potential area for reaction price once again breaks the highs and we're just following the order flow right you could potentially have a, a reaction in here potentially have a reaction in here price runs through the first one reacts to the second one so it still hasn't taken up highs and then eventually we run through so there's 80 percent of the position secure and notice like if you weren't able to execute on this first position for whatever reason you can play the continuations price pushes up has a pullback break of structure you're just playing the order flow you can get execute a position in here target in this high providing that it's you know at least a 5r um and then from there you know we are risk off so there's no risk on this position anymore we have 80 percent of the position off and we can just let the rest run and in doing so and in letting the rest run again psychologically it's much easier i don't mind a break even um like it doesn't phase me but even just looking at things and just playing the scenarios essentially we have a break of structure on the m15 and price just comes back to mitigate this area of demand right the range you potentially look at refine it down to the pivot doesn't really matter potential for more trade opportunities in here but because outside of my trading window there was nothing for me to be able to execute on. But then just, again, continually playing our price, looking at targeting these highs, right? Just logically, price should run through those highs if we're going to continue in this bullish trend. Now, notice we do have um, Friday, the 3rd of November, first Friday every month, NFP comes out. Um, so when we get that and when we hit that, price ran, you know, pretty much straight to the H4 target and pretty simple position. And that is the entire logic around the two trades that we were able to take the logic behind them and how you can identify them for yourself if you enjoyed the video subscribe to the channel plenty more of this coming the link in the description has a free course entirely free no strings attached you can go and claim it if you would like it it will teach you exactly how to trade market structure enjoy